So the other day, my daughter asked me to tell her a story um, about something that never happened. She asked me to tell a story as if my mom and dad stayed together. And that was a weird story for her to ask me to tell her. Um, but I started making it up. And I was, I was making it up. I could feel certain things happening inside of me that I can't even explain. And even now, before I even tell y'all this story, I can feel my body and my emotions and my past and my present and my future being influenced by a story that never happened. And I really don't know how to make sense of that. But I'll tell y'all the story anyway. So, once a long time ago, there was a very sensitive boy named Pedro. And he would walk along the beach shore at night and romanticize about the life he would have and the woman he would love and the children they would have together. And he would think about her so much that it was like she was real. But when he looked on his island of St. Vincent in Cape Verde, he didn't know anyone that matched the idea that he had in his mind. So one day he got it in his heart to write her some poetry, this woman that he didn't know, and write her a story about their future. And he wrote it in Cape Verdean Creole, and he wrote it in English just in case. And he took that story and those poems and he put it in a bottle and he threw it in the ocean. And when he threw it in the ocean, something happened. It was like he had gotten the weight of this romanticism off of him. And he just felt free. And he kind of forgot about it. And he went about his life meeting women, kind of being a player. And eventually he started working on ships took him all over the world and every once in a while he would think about that old version of himself that romantic version of himself and he would wonder what happened to that guy and one day he comes to a port in Virginia and he meets this woman and they see each other and for a moment it seems like there's some kind of knowing like some kind of attraction it doesn't make sense because she's not his type and he is hers. And so she decides that she's going to pursue him. And at first he thinks it's kind of exciting that someone loves him so much or so attracted to him. He had had different people be attracted to him before, but he never felt like it was 100%. But for some reason he could tell this woman wanted him to be her everything. But he didn't really think he was up to the task, but he decided to give it a shot. And so they went out and they danced and they laughed and they had a good time and they shared stories. And he started thinking, even though this woman isn't my type, maybe she's the right one for me. But then as it got time for his ship to take off, he started thinking to himself, you know what? I can't settle down here. I got to leave anyway. So why would I let myself get attached to somebody who first of all, isn't my type? And second of all, I'm probably never going to see again. And so the only way he knew how to let her go was to let her go hard. And so he suddenly pushed her away. 
and she was hurt and she ran off crying for some reason she had in just a few days that she had met him pretty much transferred all her dreams onto him you now people do sometimes and so she felt devastated and he went to get on the ship and realized he had forgotten his papers and he was like oh crap so he tried to get back to find his papers so he could get back on the ship but it was too late and the ship took off without him and he was like what am I going to do and he decided he would maybe go try to get to New York to his brother's house he knew that's the next place the ship was going to dock and then maybe he would catch the ship there but he decided to go walk on the beach one more time before he left. And as he walked down the beach, he remembered that kid version of himself, that romanticizing kid who had written those letters and poems and put them in the ocean so long ago. And he said, I wish I could find that guy again. And as he looked down the shore, remembering those days, he saw a figure off in the distance and beside that figure was a bottle. And that figure was holding something. And he thought to himself, this can't be. But it was. It was that woman. And she was holding that letter. And she was reading it. And she was crying. And he walked up to her. And he said, Joanna, where did you find that? And she said, some years ago, I was walking along this beach and I found this bottle. And I read these poems and I read this love story. And I told myself, I want this one day. And I'm not gonna lie, when I read it, I thought it was you when I met you. But then you left me. And what are you even doing here anyway? I thought you were leaving. And he was like, I missed my boat. And she was like, well, I don't ever want to see you again because I don't want to be hurt like that again. And he said, I totally understand. There's just one thing. And she was like, what's that? He's like, have you paid attention to the signature? And she was like, yeah, I can't really make it out. And he's like, it says Pedro Silva. And then she looked up at him and he looked down at her and they knew. And in that moment, they felt their futures. And in their futures, they raised some kids and they taught them about love and romance and God and all the beautiful things. But most importantly, they taught them to trust. And that when you put your love out there, it will come back to you better than you can imagine. So that was just a little made up story, you know, kind of Hollywoody kind of story, you know. But what I didn't realize is that that story was in deep contrast to the reality of my parents' relationship. Um, they ended with them divorcing when I was two. And me never really believing in any romantic things per se. And it's just wild for me to know that my own being was shifted by a story that I made up just to tell my, sto my child a, a story. And that it changed me somehow. And it makes me think about all the stories in our own lives. The stories that tell us who we are, where we came from, who we're becoming. And how limiting stories can trap us. And liberating stories can free us. And sometimes the truest stories that our souls need to hear 
never happened at all. And yet they can call us to liberation. So I'm going to be contemplating on this for a while and making some shifts. I don't know exactly what or how, but I've been doing work, narrative work for some years now. But I never, I never applied it to a foundational story like this. Um, so it's interesting. I'll leave it at that for now. And um, I wish you love, light, and liberation. All right.